All right, you crazies, here we go. Please, please, please put your name at the top of the sheet uh, so that I know it's yours and I can give you credit when you turn it in for watching the video and doing the notes. Today we're talking about order of operations. Please make sure you include the title as well and the date you complete it at the top. Here we go. Order of operations. You know the drill. You know the story. We're talking about Gemma, my girl. She's the best. Uh, and she's the best at putting things together. You know, like building relationships, uh, especially special ones. You need to just put all the right things together. Sometimes you find that person who puts all the right things together, like we both love math, we both love the order of operations, we both love sweaters. So Gemma is great at putting numbers together, about uh, combining them in the right order, and that's why we combine so well. Uh, so you need to take these notes, and including the notes I'm going to add, because grouping symbols... Gemma tells us that for the order of operations, we do grouping symbols first. The most common grouping symbols we uh, often use are uh, parentheses, but we also know that there are brackets. This year, we're talking much more about absolute value. So absolute value symbols or grouping symbols, whatever, whatever is in the absolute value is grouped together. Um, and then we talk about the... Radical dude. Radical is also a grouping symbol. And finally, the one that gets forgotten sometimes is our uh, fraction bar. So the fraction bar tells us we should group and do first the things on top, and group and do first the things on bottom, the operations, combine them, and then do, do the division um, that's represented by the division or fraction bar. Next, we have exponents. We just learned a whole lot more about exponents ru exponent rules, but in terms of combining things and uh, doing the order of operations, exponents comes after exponents come after the grouping symbols. Next, we have multiplication and division from left to right. Doesn't matter whether it's multiplication or division. Whichever you see next, you got to do it um, in order. We read left to right, so we'll do it from left to right. Multiplication and division. Same with addition and subtraction. They come after those two, after multiplication and division. But whichever you see first, addition or subtraction. Um, as we move left to right, you got to do whichever operation comes first. You got to do it first. Now you can find this in many class, many a classroom across America. Um, they're using PEMDAS, and I'm going to tell you really quickly why I don't like PEMDAS. First part we just talked about is grouping symbols. So um, PEMDAS, please excuse my Jerry and Sally. However, people remember it: parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. It only includes parentheses. We know there are other grouping symbols. That's why one strike. That's why we like Gemma. She's better. Um, the next thing is that sometimes PEMDAS can lead you wrong. I know a lot of teachers do a great job of emphasizing that multiplication and division should occur at the same time, whichever occurs further left. Um, but some people who are just following PEMDAS will look at a problem like this. Um, 8 divided by 2 times 4. We know um, that we should do the division first. 8 divided by 2 would be 4. 4 times 4 is 16. Um, but people who are following PEMDAS might do that multiplication first. They would say 8 divided by 8 is 1. That's incorrect. So that's strike number 2. Uh, we know that we do the division first. So this would be 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. The third strike is, again, with uh, the order that I know a lot of teachers do a great job of, but Gemma's better. Gemma says do addition and subtraction from left to right in the correct order. So 8 minus 2 plus 4. So Gemma is going to tell us that we do the subtraction because it's further left first. 8 minus 2 is 6. 6 plus 4 it would be 10. But again, PEMDAS, if you were just following that, you would do the addition first sometimes. 2 plus 4 would be 6. 8 minus 6 would be 2. And that would be wrong. So that's strike number 3. So don't be calm. I'm not calm. Because we don't follow PEMDAS, Gemma's better, we're following Gemma. My girl, friend, maybe. Let's see what it looks like in practice. This first example says negative 4 to the third power plus 2, time, two plus 3 times 4, all divided by 7. This is something really important I need to point out to you. That negative sign is not grouped. So exponents come... Uh, after grouping symbols, and they come before addition and subtraction. So think of that negative kind of like subtraction. It doesn't 
it's not affected by that exponent. That's going to be the big thing we're going to see in this example. But first, let's do what's grouped together. We know that this fraction bar or division bar is grouping, so it's grouping those top together. So this will be negative 4 to the third power plus. Well, what are we going to do first in there? We know when things are grouped, then we still follow Gemma. Multiplication and division are left right before addition and subtraction. So 3 times 4 is 12. 2 plus 12 will be 14. And then we have division by 7. Now this is what I'm talking about. We need to do this exponent, use this exponent, but it's only applied to the 4, not the negative sign. Um, because the negative sign isn't grouped. If, if we did want the negative, we would put parentheses around the negative 2, but they're not there. So this is something that can be confusing for some people. We're just going to do 4 to the third power will be 4 times 4 times 4. I'm going to do extra work down here. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. Now the negative sign comes into play. Now the negative sign gets whatever the exponent spits out. Um, so this would be equal to negative 64 plus 14 divided by 7 is 2. Now we need to know about in integer addition. So if you have 64 negatives and 2 positives, you have more negatives. Um, but the different signs, so they cancel out, we'll have negative 62. The next example we're going to look at together is the quantity of, or in parentheses, negative 16 plus 4 plus 2 times the absolute value of negative 3 minus 9. So we have two things that are grouped here. The first set of grouping is this negative 16 plus 4. Again, we have more negatives than positives, but different signs, so we subtract the values. We'll be left with negative 12 plus 2 times. And now in the absolute value, we have to think of this negative 3 minus, I hate, I don't hate it. I love math. But I don't like subtraction as much as I like addition, so we'll play add ops. We have negative 3 plus negative 9. So negative 3, 3 negative tiles, and 9 more negative tiles. That'd be 12 negative tiles. This is equal to that uh, expression above. Now we can simplify this even more. We'll do negative 12 plus 2 times, what's the absolute value of negative 12? Well, that, that door, or the absolute value, turns everything positive. You've got to be positive, so it would be 12. Negative 12 doesn't change that because it's being added, and we know Gemma says to do multiplication first, so 2 times 12 is 24. And our final answer, when we have 24 positives and 12 negatives, we have more positives, so our answer will be positive. Uh, and we subtract the values because we have zero pairs. The signs are different. We have some red tiles, some yellow. So we'll cancel them out. We have to subtract those pairs, those zero pairs. And we'll be left with 24 minus 12, positive 12. That's our answer here. I'm going to leave you some practice problems, as always, to do on your own. So get to work. That's the absolute value of 5 minus 7 plus 2 times 21. And then the second problem is negative 5 times the quantity of 2 plus 3 squared, or to the second power. Best of luck. I'll see you later.